I think we'll start this out with an example. We got the hell we're changing. Ladies and gentlemen, today Sitecore brings you multiple bass lines. Well, maybe it's multiple bass lines, right? So, the big concern with multiple bass lines that some people have a hard time understanding is how can you establish establish experimental control using three AB designs? A, oh sorry, A, B, another one starts here, A, and there's a B over here, and another one down here, there's an A, and there's B. So, AB designs, as we all know, have zero experimental control, but yet when you do a multiple baseline, you get lots of it. It's pretty cool. Anyway, how does that happen? It's really simple. It has to do with prediction, verification, and control, all right? So all of it becomes magical. So as we walk you through these examples, let's start with a multiple baseline across individuals, all right? But I don't know why, because why, why not? Anyway, so multiple baseline across individuals. So we start off capturing a baseline with one person. So whatever that person's name is, it is in the video at this point. So there's the there is the baseline, all right? Then we're gonna start a phase change. All right, that's what we do for phase changes here at Sitecore. And then we continue on with uh, the intervention, whatever that may be. Um, I suppose since we have a particular person here that we're talking about, and in fact, a couple more people, we should pick a behavior that's kind of fun. I don't know, maybe nose picking, all right? So nose picking is a good behavior, so let's pick noses. I'm sorry, maybe we should not you can't even tell if I'm picking mine. Anyway, um, so if we're gonna pick nose, we're gonna watch nose picking behavior. We're gonna find out how many times somebody puts their fingers in there and starts digging. Okay, so we've got a particular pattern of responding for the first baseline. We start our intervention, and then we have the pattern of responding um, after the intervention. We have nothing yet, but we have established a little bit of we have established a little bit of prediction. How do we do that? Over here. Okay, how did that happen? We got our baseline, and we predict that something is going to change based on our intervention. Right in here, okay? Um, so, subsequently, we can then verify whether or not we got the changes we expected. However, because this is an AB design, we do not have any experimental control yet. We're going to add a second baseline for that, okay? In fact, this time we're doing it across people. So we have our second individual that we're working with. I don't know, it might be a little lower. I can't quite tell from behind the screen. Anyway, so we have our second person. We're going to run that baseline for longer than the intervention. So this baseline down here is gonna continue past the start of the first intervention. In fact, we're gonna start the intervention over here, all right? Why do we do that? That way, we can see if the, inter if the behavior changes at the, at the moment that the intervention starts for both people, um, all right? Now, the person, the second person in the baseline, their behavior should not, ch should not change at all, nothing whatsoever, at the time that the first person starts their intervention, right there. Their behavior should change here when they start their second intervention, okay? Or when they start, when the second person starts their intervention, their behavior should change accordingly here. This allows us to, um, to test that effect of that intervention. We are now establishing, again, more prediction and verification, right? Again, we predicted, we predicted that the intervention would work based on the, based on, or we, we, we have our baseline, and we predict that our intervention is going to have an effect on behavior, and as you can see in the data, it had the effect for this person, then it had the effect for this person down over here. So you see nose picking decreasing. So everything's working absolutely perfectly. 
So um, we have our prediction, we have our verification, and then we double checked it with the next one, more prediction and verification, and again, more prediction and verification down here for the third person. Now you'll note with the third person that we extended their baseline well past the first one and the second one, we're into their third position now, so their intervention didn't start till over here. This allows us to make comparisons in each person's baseline up. So we go from a person's baseline here, and we look up and we see what's going on. Did they? Did the, uh, the other person's behavior is changing? Is this person's? Um, if it's not, then we can rule out things like history effects and environmental effects that they may not have control over, all evaluating whether or not our intervention is having the effect it is having. So again, you're going to look carefully at the screen. You're going to see a series of overlapping data points um, or some overlapping bars in our graphs, and those bars will show you exactly what it is you need to compare when you're looking at a multiple baseline design like this one. So. So we've talked about prediction, we've talked about verification, so how did we get control? Well, control was established by the fact that the behavior for each person changed at the moment the intervention started. So for this person, and for this person, and for this person, the behavior started to change after the intervention, not before. We do not want the behaviors to change before the intervention, otherwise we do not, or we have not established the effect of that intervention. We have a problem with control in our experiment. So. All of these things combined make one beautiful, really cool design based on some really, really simple rudimentary designs, the AB, when we combine them with an AB and another AB and another AB in a very specific pattern, as you can see here, then you will note that um, we have a very powerful internally valid design called the multiple baseline. We could have done this across individuals, like we did, we could have done it across settings for one individual, and we could have done it across behaviors. So we could have multiple behaviors or multiple settings for one individual. There's really no limit as to how you could do these things. You could do more. You could do reversals inside of this too, but that's for another situation at another time if you'd like to cover it. So again, we have some prediction. We're predicting what's coming next based on each individual baseline for each person. We're also predicting whether or not the effect is going to continue for this. If it started here, well, it can, we predict that it will continue here. We verify that by comparing up above, um, and that multiple comparisons allows us to establish control. If you have any other questions about a multiple baseline, please see us.